Hello, everyone. Thank you for sharing your time today and joining our webinar, Outdoor Video Monitoring Tips and Tricks. My name is Ting Wing, and uh, I'm the Head of Marketing and Product Management at Century AI. We are the best in class security AI that uh, provide the cutting edge AI powered video monitoring solution that is comparable with the current camera and monitoring software. On the call today, I also have Uday Kiranchaka, our CEO. Uh, he will uh, help to answer the question, like uh, interact with the participant in the webinar. Housekeeping time for the webinar today. By default, all the participants will be on mute. If you have any question during the webinar, please send them in the chat box. Um, our team will try to address it during the webinar on the chat, but we will also have the Q&A session at the end to address all of the discussion and, and question. Okay, so let's jump in. First, I want to start with the statement that outdoor monitoring is the most important use cases, but also the toughest. So even though we have so many use cases and need to monitor outdoor setting, such as residential, outdoor, uh, parking lot, construction sites, car dealership, warehouse, truck yard, it's very difficult to set up a really good system to monitoring this setting because it's so difficult to install and consider the network for the camera. The traditional burglar alarm system may be doing okay in the indoor setting, but perform poorly in the outdoor setting. The limitation of uh, the network and the challenge of uh, the, we, outdoor monitoring also require wider view with little control on light conditions. And you will get the problem with in, environmental factors like rain, snow, animals. So I bet many of you here, if you have experience with um, outdoor monitoring, you will see all of the false alarms and very frustrated to monitor an outdoor system with all of those false alarms. So in the scope of the webinar today, I will discuss five important components to set up an optimal outdoor camera monitoring uh, system. First thing is the camera setup, uh, the initial one. And then we will come discuss uh, detail about how to have a best practice in set up the basic motion. And uh, essential for outdoor camera, it's have to have monitored by AI. Um, and also the ongoing tuning and checks uh, process. And last but not least, the human behind the monitoring process. So whenever you are starting from scratch or seeking to optimize your existing outdoor surveillance system, this webinar will provide you with actionable insights and best practice for achieving comprehensive coverage. Let's jump in. Uh, hold on. Let's, uh, before we go into a lot of details that I just mentioned, I want you to take a breath and ask a very first and the most important question. What do you want to monitor? Like, like usually we will like jump in and get the camera and set it up, but we, 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 we missing that important part. Is that a high risk vulnerable area like the generator or entrance or a blind spot that you usually don't have exposure to that you don't want anybody get into uh, or the area that uh, with a lot, a lot of valuable access? Um, it's very popular to have a need to monitor the construction at night, the parking lot of the car, dealer, car dealership, or you want to monitor the car going in and out of the parking lot to make sure that you know the license plate of the car. So with that answer in mind, we then will unfold all other details. Which camera you get, how many camera you get, where to place the camera, how to set it up, and how to use the AI um, best configuration to consider the use case that you try to solve here. All right, so let's look at the camera. It can be very confusing at the beginning when you start shopping for the camera for outdoor setting. Um, you will see a lot of uh, qualification of the camera on the product fact sheets and how to choose the good one for outdoor monitoring. The goal here is not choosing top of the line, very expensive camera, but to choose a camera that relevant with your need that we, we asked the question at the beginning uh, and make sure that it suits your budget and be scalable. So you don't want to set up, a, buy a very expensive camera system and then in future your need will increase and you cannot get the similar camera that compatible with the camera that you use. So 
Um, let's look at one sample camera right here with some of the qualification and in the, um, the scope of the webinar today, I would just only highlight the key thing that relevant with the outdoor camera project. So first of all, the most common misunderstanding is that the higher resolution, the better. It's not always exact, exactly that way. So high, higher resolution, as you can see in this, uh, the photo right here, um, it showed the example of like how different resolution image look like. And it's mean the, you have a bigger photo and it will be sharper when you zoom in, but it does not mean the image quality is better. You may have really large image, but looks really bad and it cannot see the difference between the dark and the bright area. So additionally, you also need to consider the size of the sensor right here, like you see one on three in CMOS, that is the type of sensor that is very popular for the um, security camera. Um, so the, the same for the same solution camera like for MP, but larger um, sensor size, like one, let's say one on 2.7, it will be better because the sensor will have more area to capture light and it will result in the better quality image. So if you want the best case, you get very high resolution and very large sensor size, but in that case, you will need a really big bucket uh, and it's not all the time the case. So in the case of monitoring outdoor camera, my advice is not chasing after resolution. For the same sensor size, two megapixel camera might perform much better than four megapixel camera at night because it needs less light to show you the good quality image. Not mention that if you use AI solution, just like Sentry AI solution, it will, the required resolution for AI can, can process the image is usually recommended at 720 by 480, which is ensure low bandwidth utilization. In some case, too high resolution can cause huge delay in the alarm transmitting. And you don't want that delay because the nature is that you want it real time. Next thing, field of view. So this field of view of this camera is 2.8 milli millimeter. The lower number here, the wider the camera is. As you can see here, for the same view, uh, 2.8 millimeter will be able to monitor a broader area of the parking lot, but you have to trade off with the distance. So when we move to 4 millimeter, it zoom more and we can see more details of the license plate here, uh, but it's not really clear. So if you really want to monitor the car coming in and out of that gate and try to cap that license plate, maybe the, uh, the six millimeter camera is better for you. So um, if you, but if you just only want to monitor the whole parking lot for instruction to see if like somebody get into the parking lot, maybe 2.8 million is better for you. So it really depends on the use case. Go back to the first question that we asked, what you want to monitor. So after you identify the coverage of each camera, make sure to plan some overlap to eliminate the blind spot because for a large property, you don't want to install too, too few camera and, and, and miss the events because it cannot cover the area in the edge of the camera. Um, you also can consider where to mount the camera for the best coverage. At the general guideline, outdoor security camera are often mounted at the height rating uh, ranging from 8 to 12 feet um, above the ground. Not too high to affect the coverage, um, but not too low for the risk of vandalism. However, it's not a fixed rule. So it really depends on your use case and um, you, we need to visit case by case on specific um, um, property. So some other fancy feature that you can see when you, uh, you look at the camera is that like the uh, white dynamic range, you can see that it's well with that feature, it will make the camera uh, provide the better image at night or highlight compensation to make sure that um, you can handle, the camera can handle the strong source of light uh, or the bright area that can cause overexposure or blooming leading to loss of detail in case you have a huge um, source of light. Um, so this is really important, especially consider outdoor camera when you have a different unexpected source of light from vehicle, uh, from the street. Okay, so next we talk about uh, a very important part of um, um, 
outdoor camera, like weather proof. So you may see the number here, IP67. Uh, what does that mean? So the first digit represents the level of protection against the solid objects. So six means it does tight. So you don't need to worry about dust with um, uh, no ingress of dust permitted. Um, the second digit, that's at number seven here, represent the level of protections against liquids like water. So the popular outdoor camera can, can be used. Uh, we can see the range of IP65, IP66, or ID67. So for five, it protect against water Z to the camera from different direction. So IP65 in, in the short uh, period of time. So I, IP65 can be used outdoor, but it would be a good idea to cover the camera in the area that will not be continuously exposed to water like uh, under the cover or something like that. Um, number 66 will pro protect against powerful water jet. So like it may stay in the rain and like the heavy rain, um, it can be good in the rain. But number seven is so good. So if you have IP67, you can be sure that you don't need to worry about the melting snow uh, from the vertical downside or heavy, or, or heavy rain. But it's always to have a good idea to have somehow cover and protect your camera from the direct light, uh, direct uh, rain and water, because in some case, it will not damage the camera, but it can create the obstacle on the camera and create flare, especially if you monitor it at night. So we talk about night monitoring a lot uh, in for outdoor camera. So IR, IR range and night vision is kind of like important. So the camera, when it's switched to IR mode, most of the camera have this feature right now. Uh, it's good. It makes the image look clearer, but you should expect to see the 10 to 15% drop in resolution and it makes the quality of the image worse. In some case, I have been saw the cheap camera that it has IR mode, but it's create a lot of noise because the pixel has keep changing on the camera that cause extra motion detection uh, trigger. Um, so in 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 the part of the IR, it's most important that you come to night vision. It's not really need to have really high range, but it's important to match that high that range with the object that you want to monitor. So in this example on the screen, you can see that like for two camera with different uh, IR range, uh, the one on the left look clearly because if you you want to monitor this area, then this is a good setup. But if you overpower IR then it can create the hotspot on the area that you want to monitor. Um, so it, it would become not, not good. Um, so also a very, um, very um, one very important tip from me because I, I have been working with a lot of customer camera and this is kind of like hot lesson that we, we learned is that when you set up a camera, expect that the camera view at night is, will be very, very different from the camera view at, uh, during the day. So when you set up the camera, usually most of the time you do it, you see it during the day and it's look good. But at the night, it can it can be really dark or like it can just like have one spider web that completely changes your view and you cannot see anything and it's not good for monitoring. So my strong recommendation is that visit your camera setting at, at the time that you really want to monitor it to see how it's actually look like uh, when it's been monitored. Okay, so we're done with the hardware part. So now come to the fun software part. Um, so after you have the right camera and install it right, it's very important to set up to make sure that it's sending out the alert correctly. So the most basic thing, I think most of, uh, most of you already know that we set up the motion to exclude all of the very um, obvious area like the sky, the push, the tree, the, the, the road to make sure that it's not create the crazy motion uh, trigger. Um, so I have some example here. So like one example here that you can see, and it's uh, another example from my statement earlier that I visited at night because uh, you see all of the beautiful light right here. It, it would not show that a threat during the day if you set up the camera, but at night, this blinking light actually create a, a lot of problem. But this is the basic and very obvious thing. Um, we have even some more tricky case that you didn't expect that it caused problem from the camera. 
So like, for example, in this, um, this camera, usually we exclude all of the area in the sky right here, but it still send 15,000 motion a night. And it's crazy. So we come back and revisit the, the camera, and this is what we find. So if you pay attention to this area right here, there's a, a, a blinking light right there. And it keeps blinking throughout the night and create the changing and the motion, the motion and the pixel change in this area and, and send so many motion trigger for that camera. Even though this will be eliminated by, by AI after that, but we will want to have a good motion setup from this stage to not overwhelm the AI system and don't have any delay. Um, another example right here, you can see it's look pretty clear. We draw the motion area to and mask out all of the uh, distance area. It's look okay. But then we find out that the, the gate right here, it keep moving because of the wind and it, it causing the motion the whole day, the whole night. Um, so just like only one minor tweak that we exclude that gate, nobody will be on that gate. So um, we we be able to reduce the dramatically the number of motion that we have to deal with. Some example right here, sometimes something in the corner that you didn't pay attention, but it's actually caused a lot of problem when the car passing by and the headlight will cause a lot of motion in the corner. Um, it's, and pay attention to the, the light as well. So at, during the day, we don't see it, but at night, they, this property, they have um, a flashlight. It keep blinking red, blue, red, blue, red, blue. The light is not in the field of view. So I suppose it did not cause a problem, but it actually create the reflection on the small piece of wall right here. So the, the, the wall reflection and it keep changing color, red, blue, red, blue, the whole night and causing all the crazy motion that uh, we have to deal with. So yeah, so you, you already set up the really good motion but it will not get rid of all the false alarm. So I have a one example right here um, that if you have a camera with bad motion setup, it will trigger 2,000 to 20,000. It can that, that be that crazy alert at night. If you have a good motion setup, it's reduced remarkably. Still 200 alerts a night. So the key answer here is that AI, you have to have AI to making our door outdoor camera cameras monitorable um, or else you still get 200 alerts at night. So with AI, the number of uh, alerts will reduce remarkably from zero to 20 alerts a night. And most of this alert will be true alert when we detect a person uh, or a vehicle come into the field of view. Uh, some example here you, to show you how AI perform um, on detecting, de detecting institution person um, on the property, uh, in the bad weather. In, in this example, you can see, like if you cannot rely on motion, if it's raining, um, it will keep sending you a alert on raining and the reflection on water, uh, but the AI will ignore all of those and only send out the alert if the person show up. Also, AI will get rid of all of the weather, the weather component, dog and cat. Also, it can provide the specific use case with a advanced AI. Let's say you don't really care if a person passing by this street, but if they loitering in the area for more than two minutes, you want to trigger a loitering alert. So it will serve you well with the, the security monitoring use case that you, you plan for the property. And for, for AI, because AI, it's important for them to choose the AI that have the situational awareness that it's consider um, the time and space and the context of the events, consider the history of the events, what the past along and make the decision if this is the critical event or this is like, it, it may detect a, a, a person shape, but it, it find out that oh, this person has never moved. It's actually just a poster. Uh, so let's ignore it. So it's important for, for the AI to choose the AI to have situational awareness um, and handle all of the camera correctly. And in terms of camera, um, no, no AI can work for every camera. So it's also very important um, for, for having the camera level tweaking at the, for, for the AI. So Sentry AI is one of the 
uh, company like the only one company that very proud of uh, having the camera level control for the AI that we can tune at the camera level and it's self-learning over time from that specific camera um, uh, to make sure that the performance of the AI gets better over time. Um, as you can see here, also the important, uh, important case to combine between the region of interest for AI and the zone of motion for, for the camera that we set up earlier uh, to, su to support different use case. For this example, you can see that we, um, one camera, uh, but the customer may want to just really detect the person when they come into the staircase um, uh, and they don't really care about people look, uh, walking by right here. But if we, we, we can draw a larger region for loitering. So if somebody is not touched the staircase, staircase, but they like keep walking back and forth here for more than six minutes, then it's an air the loitering alert. At the same time, uh, we draw a different region for vehicle detection. So whenever a car pulling into this exact spot, we can um, detect the vehicle. So you can see one camera, it can do multiple tasks on the security use case that you have. So we we have pretty good setup um, on on motion on camera on motion and and AI was tuned it performed perfectly, uh, but thing will keep changing. So it's very important to have ongoing turning and health check. Uh, so for at Century AI, we provide you a lot of tools to do that with the camera checks report to check out if the camera, few of you, a uh, camera has been tampering or breakdown, um, the few of you mismatch re, uh, alert to, to show if the camera has been moved or dirty. This is very important because uh, it will completely change the region of interest that you set up earlier. Uh, we will also send out daily report on the idle camera, if the camera or the whole cow didn't active, uh, so you may, you know that, oh, maybe we, we need to visit the camera to see if something happened with the system or maybe network problem that you can bring it up and run again. And also, this is one thing that because I work with a lot of uh, customer, uh, Century AI customer, we learn it over time that um, we can use the um, camera activity report with the clip, limb, the clip, number of clip and number of alarm it sent out to make the sense out of it. So, for example, if you can see, if you see the, the image from the camera sends is too high, let's say more than 1,000, it means the camera actually sent a lot of um, motion, more than usual. Um, so it, it might be a good idea to revisit the setting, the motion setting. Okay, sorry, I just keep jumping. Um, revisit the motion setting or the camera um, or maybe there's a new push that you need to uh, to 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 cut it off, or you can draw a new a new uh, region to exclude that push. So revisit the camera setting. If you see a number of alerts sent out from the camera is too high, let's say it sent 200, 300 uh, alert per night. Maybe all of them as true alert in terms of it detects some person in vehicle, um, but it's not it's not reasonable number for you to monitor it, then it can be uh, the region of interest that you need to revisit, or you may revisit the whole use case that you want to monitor. Are you monitoring the neighbor property instead of the, the your own property uh, that you target to? Um, this is the time to go back to the first question we asked earlier. Okay, so we have the really good setup system, but the human behind the systems do need data. It would not meaningful if you have really good system set up, but nobody monitor it. Um, so in this webinar, we'll discuss some case study on uh, the popular setup uh, that you set up the monitoring process. So for the first case study, it can be self-monitoring. Some, some of our customer use, um, uh, especially it makes sense for um it makes sense for the property that you have uh, by natural, you have the guard and you have property on site, let's say um, the self storage facility uh, that you have uh, you know, people on site all the time. Um, so it's much easier and faster for them to react to the events. Um, so they will, the, the, the camera connect to Century AI and we will generate and send it to our portal and mobile app. As you can see the example right here from mobile app, user can check the live view of the camera and interact with the, um, the alarm and send a comment to the team. 
um, so everything was saved in the log. So it's make the uh, monitoring process very transparent and, and clear and easy. Uh, you can also arm and disarm the system directly from the mobile app. Another case that, oh, you don't have anybody on site and you don't want to wake up at night. You want professional handle that for you. So it's time to connect uh, with um, a professional monitoring service. Um, so we have deep integration to send, uh, besides sending out to our app, we also send it to the professional monitoring center um, through our deep integration through stages, Manitou and Imix, the, um, the most popular um, platform to, to use to monitor the system. Uh, and this will enhance the communication of the whole, uh, all of the party in, involved in the monitoring process. Um, so this is one example. This has happened um, um, two months ago for one of our customers that they onboard. And that night, um, Century AI detect a suspect came into the parking lot, tried to steal the catalytic converter at 11 p.m., 11.04. Uh, we sent out the alert right away to property manager and the monitoring center at the same time at a couple of seconds. And the property manager right away confirmed the events and monitoring center received the alarm and dispatched police after one minute. 20 minutes later, uh, police came and arrested the guys. Um, so this is th this example show you how the good system combined with the good process can create a lot of impact on your security um, goal to monitor the outdoor property. The third use case, uh, I know that like some uh, of you here joining the webinar is, uh, is monitoring center uh, that already use Imix to monitor the video system. So uh, we also have the deep integration with Imix uh, AI link uh, to verify all of those along for you. Um, so this can be a very quick and um, the to, quick way to implement AI on your current outdoor camera system. So we went through a lot of information so far from camera setup, um, how to set up the basic motion, how to use the AI, um, and the importance of ongoing tuning and checking and having the monitoring process set up. Uh, with that, I, I hope to uh, open to the discussion if you have any question or any, we can, uh, we can have a little discussion right here. Uh, all right, so... Okay, let me end the show so I can see the question. If you want to voice the question um, directly, uh, feel free to raise your hands and, and ask the question. Okay. Uday, do you see any question in the chat? Um, not yet. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Oh. Okay. One question to the host. I see that you have you show evil eye in the in the case study. Do you have the connection with evil eye? Yeah. So. Uh, um, I yeah, I I I I may add a little bit uh, uh, on on that. So right now we are the only AI solution that have deep integration with Eagle Eye, and it solves the case for real time monitoring for Eagle Eye, um, and it also create the bridge to connect Eagle Eye system with the um, the monitoring center platform. Uh, so you may use the um, um, analytics on Eagle Eye, which is pretty good for searching and and searching the video from your your cloud storage. Um, uh, but but deep integration between Sentry AI and Eagle Eye will uh, like it, it's very easy to to connect just like one one click, uh, and you can have everything okay. on Sentry um, Sentry system. Um, all right. Can, uh, I think yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we have one question. Okay, the question from Amir: Can you AI can your AI work with any camera system? So. We work, uh, our, our camera, uh, I will go back to the, um, uh, the architecture here. So we work with uh, most of the camera uh, system on the market, like except for the camera system that is completely closed. 
Um, so most of the camera and NVR on the market have the way to send out the motion alert. Um, the way we 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 connect with these besides of um, eagle eye integration, so we can connect directly with the NVR and the camera as long as the NVR and the camera connect to the internet and can send out email. Um, and uh, for, we have a lot of camera in the list. Um, okay, Ubiquiti, I think that is a familiar name. I think we, 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 we deal with that before. But basically, um, as long as the camera can send out email uh, to us with attachment, then we can handle the uh, alert for that camera. Um, we have a list of passer for specific camera. Most of the time, Auto Paso will handle uh, most of the case, but some some camera system have very specific format. Like for example, I know Uni Five um, or, or um, send they send out the GIF image uh, with the link, um, not the regular attachment. Uh, so we we can also handle those uh, unique case and. Uh, can write a new password within three days, um, three business day to handle the new type of, of NVR and camera. Uh, we are monitoring our system. Can we use just your AI? Um, yes. Um, so if you, if you, if you, um, it's a lot of customer um, like property manager, um, uh, self storage, um, only even residential. They they see that it makes sense for them to. Um, to verify the alert themselves and, and take action. Um, so with the mobile app, it's very easy to self-monitoring. All right. Okay. I have a couple of questions uh, I received, uh, Ian. Uh, yes. First is, uh, how soon can you actually get the signal uh, to the central station? The, this is, I'm assuming, from Sentry AI, um, and this is uh, from Tom. Oh yeah. So um, as I, I I show earlier on the example that that's a real number, and I I actually record that number from our system. Everything is uh, very transparent on our platform, uh, on our portal that you can revisit when we receive the image, um, when we send out the signal. Um, so most of the time, when the time the from the time that we receive the image, it takes us a couple seconds to process the image and trigger the alert. Um, and maybe it, it takes another couple seconds, uh, up to 20 seconds to send that signal to the monitoring center. It depends mm -hmm. on the integration uh, as well, but usually that is the range of time. So it it kind of like immediately that we send. Um, Okay. And another one was uh, actually from Tom again is, uh, uh, should we put the schedule on the premises equipment or best to use Sentry software? Uh, this is, uh, I think uh, the schedule probably on the camera system and the NVR system on premise, uh, or uh, should you put it uh, on our side? This is a very, very uh, nice question. So it's actually, uh, it's, it's, it also another tips and tricky. It really depends on the case that you want to monitor. So for the customer that you know for sure that I will just def definitely only monitor it from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Never have another case. Then we recommend you to set up the schedule on the camera system. So like outside of that hour, don't worry about sending out anything to Sentry AI at, at all. But for some for the case that you may you the 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 the, the schedule may be flexible. Someday you may you may want to disarm it during the night because you expect that there's a contractor coming in or some some someday you want, oh, I want to arm it earlier because it's we close early today, right? So if that is the case, then you can set it up at the century level. Um, so when we receive the image and it's outside of the schedule, we just we just ignore it. We don't send out the alert. Um, but you have the option to arm and disarm the system. Like when you arm and disarm the system, it overwrite the schedule on Sentry and it will process outside of the schedule. So it really depends on the 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 need of the customer. If you think that no, definitely no, I will not monitor it outside the, the, that time, then it's better to put it at the camera level. Okay. Oh, uh, Ashton uh, said, asked me if did you mention 
into integration is based on email, not stream. Yes. So we we very cautious about the bandwidth. Um, so we connect with the camera through the email, um, um, and we we also connect with the stream, but mainly for viewing viewing purpose. So when you receive an alarm, uh, an alert. From from Century uh, on Century app, you can check the live view. At that time, we pull the stream. Uh, so this this is really good for the case that you monitoring outdoor and a lot of our customer even set up uh, outdoor system using five G connection because you know like I mentioned earlier, installations limit. You cannot have a place to wire, um, provide the PoE uh, power. So a lot of our customers are using the uh, cellular system with the 5G connection, which is completely standalone. Um, so bandwidth is real is a, a like a cautious here. So um, that's the reason why we we realize it on the email. Uh, but still, you have the option to see the stream uh, for verification. Are there any upcoming, Austin asks, are there any upcoming AI feature update that we can look forward to in the future? Um, uh, yeah, so we are working, uh, we keep doing the, the um, um, R&D and bringing the latest AI. Uh, the good thing about AI on the cloud is that whenever you see something new coming up, um, we can bring it to the cloud to you. So you don't need to rip off the camera and install another camera with better software. Um, so we continue working on that right now. Um, I, ca I cannot review what is the next AI that we will release, but we continue uh, improving the performance of our, um, our, our AI um, engine to make sure that it's make less mistake, um, never miss the events and uh, provide the best performance. Yeah, and if there are any particular, you know, uh, features that you're looking for, uh, please send them our way, uh, and we'd be happy to talk to you in more detail about yeah. uh, specific timeline for those products. Yeah, yeah if you have a, a specific need, yeah, definitely come to me and Uday, and uh, we can we can brainstorm and discuss how we can uh, bring that up to you for the next um, release. Can you set up the AI for us and how much would cost? I'm very interested and I would appreciate. Yeah, so I, I can um, I can follow up with you uh, later if you need very specific consultation. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's very, very uh, depends on the use case and different type of property. So we uh, we would love to discuss with you more to understand your need um, and, and have better discussion on the cost. Um, yeah. yeah. There's one more question, uh, Hien. Um, so if uh, these solar setups, right, uh, the trailers are becoming very popular, uh, what is needed for a solar setup, such as at a construction site? Yeah, it's um, I, 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 deal, I deal with some customer on the solar uh, mm -hmm. system and 5G network. So it kind of like complicated because you need to navigate the network limit on the 5G as well. Um, so, so some some of the model of the camera solar camera have pretty good connection, but the the problem is that it doesn't have any other way to access the camera, like because it's completely standalone. Um, so our the, the working solution right now that I can see is that um, you get a static IP network from the the provider, um, and we can set up the communication. Uh, would but like because we use email to send out. So for the alert, it's it's actually not really important for to have a static IP. But uh, for the live view, um, then you will you will need to acquire uh, extra service from the the provider. It's I I believe that it costs like extra six dollar a month per sim or something. Um, so not not really expensive, but it will it will uh, solve a lot of problem with the connection with with your solar unit. Um, does this AI work as an add-on with digital watchdog? So digital wa watchdog, we don't we don't have a kind of like uh, API integration with digital uh, watchdog, but we we definitely work with digital watchdog if you set up the SMTP connection with us. Um, I believe that we have customer using digital watchdog to connect with us. All right. Yeah, probably a time for just one more question, I guess. And we have a few announcements, I think, uh, to ESX and all. So, yes. So, 
Okay, I'm managing 10 auto dealership and I really can use your AI. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So uh, we will talk more after, after the webinar. And uh, also, as uh, Hian mentioned about the self-monitoring versus professional monitoring. Uh, so you can uh, like do your assessment of the pros and cons. And uh, we have great partners uh, who have uh, UL certified facilities and uh, uh, 24 by 7 professional monitoring. They monitor not only uh, the cameras, they monitor all alarms, uh, fire, burger, any of them, and provide a consolidated view as well. So uh, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to kind of uh, provide you uh, all options that uh, you know uh, that you can take advantage of. One thing that I forgot to mention the the good the good thing about using um, AI and our system is that if you have different camera system, usually let's say you have one milestone system right here, another system Hikvision uh, hand wash system over there, and different property. Usually you have to manage different platform to access those. Uh, if you connect all of those with Sentry AI, everything will be in the same place. So you can monitor them all and access the live view, everything from the same photo and mobile app. Um, so it would be much easier for you to handle different location and different system as well. All right, so we have, um, I hope that it's the webinar is insightful for you. Uh, so feel free to leave some comment at the, the post webinar survey. Uh, one announcement is that next week I will be in ESX. Um, it's uh, started uh, and in the exhibition ESX um, started from June 6 to June 7 in Kentucky. Uh, so if you visit the show, um, feel free please ping me and um, we can catch up and like uh, discuss um, furthermore like if you have any idea on what, what you want to hear next in the next webinar series um, feel free to leave us comment as well mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time thanks Ian uh, it was an outstanding presentation and great questions from everyone uh, appreciate all your time and again uh, feel free to reach out to Ian or me if you have any questions and how to improve your outdoor monitoring. Okay, thank you guys.